Hi everyone and welcome to part two of this three-part mini-series in which I will show you how to do pockets, pleats and the waistband. Two weeks ago I showed you how to do two variations of pockets and today I'm going to show you how to do two variations of pleats. Uh, I'm going to cover cartridge pleats and knife pleats, which I often use on the front of my skirt. Now, the direction of knife pleats can have a huge influence on how your garment will look. For example, the pleats I have on the front of my skirts are folded towards the center front, creating a depth of the center front and thus the illusion of a negative curvature, which makes you appear to be smaller. Now, if I turn it around and pretend to be that this is my center front and have the pleats folded away from it, it will highlight uh, my center front and actually accentuate the positive curvature that we're on, making you appear to be wider. Now this will even be more enhanced when you use a shiny fabric like silk or even shot silk. Right, first thing we're going to need is our measurement from center front to the side seam, which is uh, 72 and a half centimeters, all right. My waist measurement is um, 73 with my old corset. My new corset is actually, I can, I'm able to, to tight laser. Um, I'm going to give that one centimeter extra uh, of ease for, uh, to make room for the curve and to make room for um, waist um, the waistbands of the petticoats. So my waist measurement that I want my waistband to be is 74 centimeters. So if you divide that by four to get one quarter of your waist, that is 18 and a half centimeters. So you want our um, piece of center front to side seam want to be that that's 18 and a half centimeters wide. That's one four, that's one quarter of my waist measure. Right, then we measured um, 72 and a half centimeters of the fabric that needs to be uh, pleated down into 18 and a half centimeters. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to subtract one and a half centimeter for um, the pleat with the pocket. Um, and that, that will make sense later on when I show you, but I'm going to subtract one and a half centimeters from that. So that leaves us with 71 centimeters of fabric that we need to pleat. All right. Okay. So if we take that 71 uh, of fabric and we subtract my waist, a quarter of a waist measure of that, which is 18 and a half. That leaves us with um, 52 and a half uh, centimeters of fabric that we need to make disappear, so to speak. That's probably spelled wrong, but sue me. <laughs> anyway, right. Now, the reason why I subtract my waist measurement from the fabric is because that's 18 and a half centimeters will be shown. Um, then we're going to figure out how much pleats do we want or how width, uh, how, how much width your, uh, you want your pleats to be. Uh, I like to be mine around two centimeters, which is actually very convenient because that leaves us with, uh, with nine pleats uh, because 18 and a half divided by nine pleats gives us a pleat, pleat, pleat width of 2.05 centimeters, right? So we know that we would want our pleats to be two centimeters wide. If we um, do nine pleats, that ends up with a quarter of our waist measure, right? Then we have that 52 and a half centimeters we're also going to divide that by nine pleats and that gives us 5.8 centimeter per pleat um, 
to disappear. Now, obviously, that's going to be folded in half. So that will be um, 2.9 depth. Your, cent your, your pleat will, will be 2.9 centimeters deep. Are you still with me? <laughs> so, for example, this is our center front. This is our first pleat. So this is two and a half cent, uh, two two point nine centimeters. This is two point nine centimeters, which makes up for five point eight. Then we get uh, two centimeters, right? That's what that what we see, and then we continue with two point nine up to there. So two centimeters, two point nine, two point nine. 2 centimeters, 2.9, 2.9, 2 centimeters, etc. etc. Then when we get to the last pleat, that's where that one and a half centimeter comes in. That's our last pleat. Then we're going back in, and that's where our pocket comes in. This is oh, that's not a straight line, but this is our back panel of the skirt. This is our front. So you have a sort of a box pleat. This is where your side seam is. And then this is where your pocket is. Does that make sense? So the pocket is here. Your side seam is here hidden underneath this pleat. Now what I usually like to do is I like to make a little bit of a template for easy and accurate um, marking. So. I've got a piece of cardboard here. I'm going to mark 5.8 and 2. And if there's more space, there is. Let's go this way. 5.8 and 2 again. Right. So now we can use this as our little template um, to mark it on the fabric. Or you can just do it directly on the fabric, whichever one you prefer. Um, this just takes less brain power, I think. <laughs> All right, so here we have our skirt panel. Um, I have the right side of the fabric up and that makes for easier uh, pleating. I have my center front here and my pocket is over here. So, so I'm going to start from center front to the side seam. And um, the first thing we want to mark is our first pleat. So we go there, there. And then we can move our template. And then we should end with a centimeter and a half here, which we do. Perfect. To make sure your pleats are all also very straight, I like to uh, extend my pleating line. And um, right now we have two centimeters of um, seam allowance here. Once the pleats are stitched down, I'm going to trim it back to one centimeter because we only need one centimeter seam allowance on the front. I'm going to take our pins. Um, I like to start from the top. So this is our first pleat. This is our center front. And I just make sure my waistline adds up and my pleat is straight. Then I go from there to there. And what I like to do is we have our first pleat here, which overlaps slightly with the second pleat. So I'm going to pin those two pleats together. Go, next one. Make sure your waistline adds up.
All right. So we have done our pleats, except for the last one, which is where our pocket disappears in. And here it's going to be a little bit tricky because our last pleat is actually longer on the, on the back than it is on the front, which means if I'm going to fold it over here, I don't know how well you can see this. If I fold it over here, that gets double. Now, also, because we're going to cartridge, cartridge pleat the back panel, do not pin the back panel. Let me show you how that looks from the back. So we have our pleats here. This is the skirt that goes into a pleat that way with the pocket. You can see here is the opening of the pocket and this is the back panel now the reason why we're not uh, pinning this with us is because this is going to fold over and will be cartridge pleated and then it will be sewn on by hand which I will explain later now that we have that all pleated I'm going to paste baste it down um, on both sides of my waistline that way all the pleats are nicely secured while processing and putting it in the waistband uh, without actually stitching over our um, basting thread, which can sometimes be a little bit of a pain in the, you know what. <laughs> so I'm starting out below the waistband only putting, I'm only basting down this pleat. I'm not touching the backside panel of the skirt. Then I move all of my seam allowances to the back. And I'm basting this pleat down. And I'm going to the next and the next. And we can also do that on the other side. Now make sure that you stay within a one centimeter reach because we're going to trim the seam allowance here. We can also remove the pins. Right. So I only did the pleat, I didn't take the back panel and then I'm going to put everything towards this side and continue basting. This one's nicely pleated. Uh, in the meantime, I'll go start on the other side and um, I'll be right back. Right, so this is both of the front panels uh, basted down into their pleats. And as you can see, they all really want to fall in nicely. The last two are pleated inwards. Uh, but only on the front panel for now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim the um, seam allowance. Now you can do this earlier. I just like to do it at this stage. Now make sure when you're going to cut that you're only going to cut the seam allowance from the front skirt panel. So make sure your pocket is out of the way everything and you can 
lift it up here. So basically the front panel is now all prepped and ready to go for the waistband to go on. Uh, but first we're going to prepare the back panels. Now what I like to use is um, fusible interlining and I'm just going to iron that on on my seam allowance. Now this is a centimeter and a half wide which is fine that's totally okay. You can use, you can cut your own strips. You can even do it with other ways. You can uh, sew in or baste in like reinforcement fabric to make it more historically, or historically accurate. You can use whatever um, support structure you want here. I just like to use iron on interfacing and I'm going to do that all the way from front up to the beginning. And then once that ironed on, uh, you can go ahead and finish off this edge um, to your preferred method, which for me is, um, I like to serge it. So here is the serged edge and I also did my center back. Then I went ahead and pressed my seam allowance down right on my waistline. The reason I did that is because we're going to, with cartridge pleats, you pleat them and then you hand stitch um, the pleats to your waistband. So you actually don't have seam allowance that goes into the waistband. But the seam allowance here is actually used as a reinforcement for the pleats, if that makes sense. Um, right, so now that I've pressed right on my line, I'm going to remove my basting stitch, uh, which you can also do in the front as well. Um, I've left it in for so you guys can see um, what I'm doing. <laughs> but yeah, basically you can already, you can, you can take it out. Now that the basting has been removed, we can go ahead and do our markings. Now I've made a little bit of a template because ever, over the years, uh, every time I want to do cartridge pleating, I sort of had to wreck my bane, like, uh, how do I do that again? So this is just my master template that is on my pin board and I can just take that like, Right, this is how it goes, this is how the construction is. Um, I usually, for my 1830 skirts, have a centimeter deep pleats, like so. They're not too deep because I don't have a lot of fabric to process in it. Um, you can play around with how much uh, um, yardage you want to do in your pleats, how deep you want to do your pleats. That is all optional, especially if you want to have more volume at the back of your skirt. But this, for my 1830s, this is how much I use a centimeter deep. And uh, my center back uh, seam is two centimeters wide because it also serves as a little bit of a placket. Um, if you have the other, the other side as well, they close like this together uh, with a f two tiny poppers here to keep the um, thing closed. So this is also very handy to figure out uh, where you want your um, um, threading to go. Because obviously you do not want to have it on the folding line. You want to have it in the middle so that when you pull it, you have that harmonica effect. And also is uh, for me to see if I need to start at the top or the bottom of the fabric when I start to do my threading. So I'm going to draw my horizontal lines and I have my first row at half a centimeter from the edge and my second row a centimeter and a half from the edge. So, so and then the other one goes centimeter and a half which is basically our line of the serger so that's uh, easy to see right then we're going to see right 
So a centimeter and a half from the edge. So our first um, hole will be. And then every centimeter we're going to do that. So So these are all the points where we're going to thread our needle through. So let me uh, continue marking the rest of the skirt and I'll be right back. Right, so we have done our markings and we can start threading our uh, thread, gathering thread uh, in the fabric. Now, this is also why I have this little template is to figure out in an instant on which side of the fabric I need to start. So according to this one, we want to start on the right side of the fabric. So. I have made a little knot, or a ready big knot, so my thread won't go. And then just All right, so I have both of my sides uh, threaded. Now the first thing before we're going to continue is we're going to secure our pocket because it's still a little bit on the loose. So we have our pocket here. We have our pleat that goes that way. We have our back panel. As you can see, we have our one centimeter of seam allowance difference here. So we're going to make sure that our pleat is facing towards the front panel. I'm just going to pin this. Now my still happens to end up right at center front. So my two pockets, if I were to have the same one on the other side, see, this is my center front. They sort of meet each other there. Now you can also see how that's laying down. If this were to be a 90 degree angle, as we talked about in a previous video, it would not have the possibility to wave out as it does now. All right, so very quickly, just going to base this down in the seam allowance so it will stay put. And then make sure that all seam allowances are facing the right way. Now what we can do is we can pull our cartridge pleats threads. This is always a very satisfying moment. This is how that looks from the other side. Sometimes you need a little bit of pulling. Now, obviously this is not a quarter of my waist, um, but you can see how we are doing over here. Um, now, what happens here at the transition is we're going to fix that with the waistband. So obviously the first pleat will be right next to where that pleat goes. But I will show that 
once we put the waistband on. And here you see the complete picture. This is our front panel of the skirt with our center front and all our pleats are facing towards the center front. And here we have our cartridge pleats. And that's it for today's video. Stay tuned for part three, which will be the last one of this mini series, in which I'll show you step by step on how to do the waistband and also how to attach the cartridge pleats to the waistband. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.